Fusion. Okay. Right. Now, um, the third most asked question in golf. We covered the, first, the, the most asked question earlier on, which is how do I get more distance? The second is um, how many women did Tiger was actually sleep with? But the third most asked question is the side hill lie. Okay. How do I play the side hill lie? So very simple. I've decided we're going to deal with that here. Okay. Now I've simulated a few side hill lies here. Okay. Now because I'm a trick shot artist, people think this is a bit of trickery. But let's just have a look at them. This is a slight side hill lie. All right. This one's probably, this feels a little bit downhill still to me. All right. And this one's probably one that most of you even might have had today. All right. So really easy. But I'm a trick shot artist, so no one believes but there's not trickery involved. So, on that note, who's the best golfer here? Who's the lowest handicap? What are you playing on? You're a one. Come and join me. Okay. And the reason I need a low handicap, what's your name? Marnes. Marnes. Okay, Marnes. Michael. Okay, so Marnes, where do you play your golf? Bronco Spray. Yes, so you're probably like a plus two at most golf courses. Okay. Because the handicap system is proper. Okay. Now, Marnes, okay, so I'm going to get you to hit this last one, but what I normally do when I do these shows, I normally take dial sticks. Yeah. Those very cheap wooden sticks, okay? But I left them at home this morning, okay? So all I've got is these prototype shops. They range between four and eight grand, okay? So hence, I'm asking for a low handicap golfer, right? So <laughs> let's take these ones out the way, okay? So Marnes is going to show you that it's not trickery, okay? It's very simple, okay? Watch this, very simple. <laughs> One. Are you sure about that? <laughs> okay, we're gonna we're gonna have to have to talk about now you didn't look very comfortable over that shot, do you agree? Okay, now you remember what I said about Sylvia Ballesteros a little bit earlier. Okay. So so you should have actually looked at that shot slightly differently because you weren't comfortable, okay? And you're you're supposedly a one handicap, okay. So let's have a look how you probably should have played this shot. Okay, so in the words of Sevi Balestos, get creative. So, Manus, what I need you to do is to assume the position. Okay, so I want you to just like that. Okay, there we go. There you go. Now you're looking comfortable. All right, so use your better ball partner. Okay, so quite simple. Okay, there you go. All right, there. All right. Level out the line. Think a little bit. Use your creativity. Thank you, Marnus. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Now, Marnus, um, who did you, did you play with today? Them. Did, did you play with anyone you never played with before? Yeah. Who? Uh, Francois. Francois. Okay. Francois, come and join me. Okay. Because it's quite awkward. Now, you get in a golf day. You don't know. He could be. He could be a serial killer. Okay. And to ask you to stand on the first tee in, in those four ball photos. Okay. To ask you to like, get close arm around, and it's awkward. Okay. It's kind of like you're feeling right now. Okay. Every single game of golf that you play presents an opportunity for you to get acquainted with your playing partners first. So, come and join me because we're going to get acquainted. Okay. So what I need you to do is very simply, okay, to take these balls. I want you to come and stand here with your feet together like this, and all I want you to do is just drop the ball. Onto there for me. Okay. So where I am, feet together, just drop it. You don't have to throw it down down there. Put your feet together right over there. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. Off you go. Don't throw it, just drop it. Okay. Oops. Okay. Right. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Just, just drop it nicely. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there you go. That's what I thought. All right. And last one. All right, okay, so what we've done is we've worked out from that. Firstly, we're well acquainted. We know that you can't throw up a shit and I can hit like hell. Okay. So use the opportunity to get acquainted. Thank you, Mondas. That's it. Okay. Right, so um, it's amazing how. Did anyone come from far today? Anyone fly from Cape Town or Durban or anywhere? That's four ways. That's low come. flying, different. That's four ways, come. Hey? Four ways. It's also, no, anyone fly on an airline? Who, who flies regularly? Tabs, you fly around a lot. Where, what airlines do you travel? Kalula, Manga? Or do you do the, like the... Yeah. Oh, anyway. He's got a jet. Because I've worked it out. You know these, what they call low-cost budget airlines, okay? They've actually screwed me over, okay? 
for you, most of you guys, when you're traveling on business, it's cool. Overnight bag, laptop bag, <laughs> off you go. But when you're traveling 30 with 32 kilos of golf equipment, it becomes rather expensive. I prefer the old way because you just checked your bag in. It didn't matter how much it weighed. Now, I've decided to get my own back on these low cost airlines by creating a golf club that I could firstly store in overhead baggage. Okay, when I get to my destination of choice, I merely unfold it. Now, it's amazing how many guys I meet who say they can relate to this. <laughs> but if you're like me, you're really going to love this golf club. Why? <laughs> you don't even need a caddy. It's going to save you an absolute fortune. Okay. Now, the latest buzzword that you hear in terms of selling of golf equipment, and you see it on TV when you're watching you at the pro shop and the, and, the, and the golfer's club, all advertising custom fitment. Okay. Now, it's vital to be custom fitted. Okay. Why? Well, you're spending eight and a half thousand rand on a Epic driver or an M2. So you may as well have it built for you as part of the service. They include that in the actual sale. But most of you, what you do is you actually just go to the shelf, you find one that you think you like, you find one that looks the same but has still got the plastic on it and that's the one you take. Now it's ill-fitted for you because imagine a very tall guy goes and does that and doesn't get custom fitted. So he arrives on Saturday at the golf club with his mates. <laughs> looks a little bit silly. Right? Only hits it about 320. Could be could get a little bit further. But then of course you get the other oak. The short little guy. <laughs> who gets an extended length driver. <laughs> and off he goes. <laughs> and it just looks so silly. So go and get yourselves custom fitted accordingly. Right, okay. Now at this stage a lot of people say to me, Yeah, and uh, I had the question earlier, guys are saying, okay. Do you still play golf? Oh, yes, I play golf. What's your handicap? No, I'm, I'm still a pro golfer, okay. And a lot of guys say to me, why am I still not playing on the tours? Well, very simply, how many pro golfers do you know that have their own fan club? Okay. <laughs> it's cheesy, yeah. Right. I'm gonna close off with two stories, okay? One, the first one is about confidence. Now, I'm going to take you back a few years where there was a guy by the name of Bobby Locke. Now, Bobby Locke, many South Africans forget this, but South Africans, uh, Bobby Locke won four major championships. Okay, he won four Open Championships. He never won a major outside of the UK. And the, the reason was, was very simple. What happened was, in his entire career, he only played 54 events on the US PGA Tour. Now, I want you to start doing some mathematics. Out of those 54 events, he won 14 of them. Outside of his wins, he finished top three 30 times. And the, the, all the remaining tournaments, except for one, he finished top 10. That's how good Bobby Locke was. But they banned him for life because he didn't arrive at a tournament because his car broke down. And they said to him he didn't honor a commitment to the sponsors, so they banned him for life. A guy called Claude Harmon came out two months later and said that they banned him because he was too good. The Americans were grooming two players, one by the name of Sam Sneed and another by the name of Jimmy DeMerit, that they were grooming two of the best players in the world, and he was making them look average. Bobby Locke also didn't, had an attitude they didn't much care for in the States. He used to get up on the first tee and say, where's the first tee, what's the course record? And inevitably, he'd break the course record. So the next time you play in a golf day, maybe similar to this, with unfamiliar people on an unfamiliar golf course, take a page out of Bobby Locke's book and try and play it a little something like this. Where's the first tee? What's the course record? Tees. Overrated. <laughs> right, so that's how you make a statement on the first tee, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to close off with a little story about two very good friends of mine who paved the way for the likes of Louis, Charles, great to see Hayden Porteous, Brandon Stone, George Kutsia. We've got an abundance of young golfers who followed in the footsteps of Ernie and Retief. Now, I grew up with the likes of Indian Retief, so did Paul, okay? We play, all played junior golf together, then provincial, then national, and we all turned professional together. The difference between myself and Ernie and Retief is that I matriculated in 1988, they didn't. Um, <laughs> but nonetheless, these two golfers, it's the one and only time we've had two South African golfers accomplish being in the top five at the same time in the world. 
In the 2003, Ernie was hot on the heels of Tiger Woods. He was world number two. Retief Kursen, who'd come off a string of PGA Tour wins as well as the US Open, got to world number five. Ernie then suffered a very suspicious yachting accident. You guys might remember it results from having knee surgery. So he had to take the remainder of the year off. Now, anyone believe that story about knee surgery? Yeah. Not too many of you, it's okay. Now, with that, in the December of that year when Ernie was in recovery, Retief and Ernie were playing at their home course in Lake Nona, Florida for something that pro golfers normally don't play for, their own money. $5,000 skins. After 17 holes, not one skin had traded hands. They stood on the 18 tee box, seven under par apiece. Ernie got up and ripped one down the middle. Retief, feeling a bit of pressure playing for his own money, just cut the ball ever so slightly, and the ball went bouncing down the cart path. Now, Ernie got up from 230 yards and hit a beautiful shot into about 20 feet, looking good for the win. Retief called Ernie over, and Ernie came bumbling over the golf cart. You're going to have to follow me. So, Ernie came bumbling over the golf cart, and Retief called him over and said, listen, but I'm here on the cart path. I need you guys just to move there. Where can I like to drop? And at that, Ernie said, listen, but we're playing here for our own bucks. We're playing for $5,000 skins. Uh, you have to play it as a buy. He said, come on, Wood. He said, listen, we're playing here for our own bucks. We've got $5,000 skins, 18. It's like a lot of money, so you've got to play it as a buy. <laughs> and at that, who's never to back out of a challenge, has a few practice swings. I mean, Kempton probably. What's the shank? Right. Are we going to be going at if I wouldn't, if that pylon down there? There's a pylon on the right, okay? And he gets up and he hits the most amazing golf shot. The ball flies, pitches six feet behind the hole and spins back to a foot. And Ernie looks at this and goes, Jeez, Goose, that was a great shot. What did you hit? He said, you're 86. All right, with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go inside. Allow me the privilege just to have a quick shower. I'll see you guys inside shortly. Thank you for your time, and we're going to have a wonderful evening of fundraising.